In 2008, Republic Act 9497 was enacted into law, which led to the creation of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. It is the governing body responsible for implementing policies and crafting rules to ensure safe, economic, and efficient air travel. These rules are called the Philippine Civil Air Regulations or PCAR. In it, you can find the requirements on how you can become a pilot. According to these regulations, different kinds of flying require different types of licenses and ratings. So whether you're flying purely for fun, as a career, as an airline pilot, or just when you want to fly gliders or even hot air balloons, you're going to need the appropriate license or rating. The first step to becoming a pilot is going through a comprehensive medical exam. The CAAP requires its airmen to pass an exam in order to keep their licenses valid. These exams may include a visual acuity and color vision test, an audiometry test, a few laboratory tests, a dental exam, an electrocardiogram, a chest x-ray, and a physical and mental exam. Depending on the type of pilot license you're applying for, there will be a corresponding required medical certificate. For example, if you want to apply purely for fun under a private pilot license, you're gonna need a class two medical certificate. Although not very restrictive, the holder must be physically and mentally fit to exercise the privileges of the license. Now, if you want to fly for a career, a class 1 medical certificate is what you'll need. This follows a more rigid medical standard compared to that of a class 2 medical certificate. Those who do not meet the medical requirements may also apply for a discretionary certificate. Now let's talk about the different airmen licenses. A private pilot license, a commercial pilot license, an airline transport pilot license, a multi-crew pilot license, a glider pilot license and a free balloon pilot license all have common requirements. License holders should be able to read, speak and understand English, hold a radio telephony license, pass the theoretical subjects, complete the training and pass a CAAP checkride. When I prepare for checkride or any uh, simulator checkride or a license check for that matter, no matter if you're getting your first private pilot or your CPL, your IFR, IR training or IR rating or your ATPL rating or even for us in the airlines that every few months we get a simulator check flight and an actual line proficiency check, the preparation is the same. You would still feel those butterflies in your stomach. You would still uh, need to actually prepare for the flight. Uh, it's normal for you to feel a little bit jittery and that's perfectly okay. So if all you want is to fly for fun and fly with passengers, a private pilot license is all you need. Here you must first secure a student pilot authorization and be at least 17 years of age by the time you apply. PPL applicants must have at least a class 2 medical certificate and have no less than 40 hours of flight time. When I was 10 years old, my father took me to the movie Battle of Britain, and he gave me a plastic model of a Spitfire, the iconic World War II fighter airplane. I fought many enemy aces, all in my imagination. I grew up to become an engineer. I eventually became a global executive, the chief supply chain officer of a $4 billion American company. Something else happened along the way. I also became a private pilot. I was 47 years old when I flew my first solo at Omni Aviation. After 16 years as a private pilot, I've now logged over 1,000 hours, 
more than 3,000 takeoffs and landings in my airplane. The private pilot license allows me to fly family and friends all over Luzon and nearby islands. Still with my private pilot license, I completed my instrument training. I earned my tail dragger endorsement, acquired multi-engine time, and trained for two years in aerobatics. The Philippine private pilot license is also useful even overseas. I've flown actual dogfights with ex-U.S. Navy and Marines fighter pilots at Air Combat USA. I flew from historic airfields in England, orbited medieval chateau in France, landed below sea level in the Netherlands. I've flown into Oshkosh, arriving with 10,000 other airplanes in the biggest air show in the world. Recently, my Philippine private pilot license earned me an FAA private pilot certificate. I now have the privileges and benefits of a U.S. private pilot. The best airplane I ever flew was a restored World War II Spitfire over New Zealand. My eldest son, Carlo, also a private pilot, was just 10 meters away in a T-6 Harvard. We flew formation aerobatics and battled each other in a mock dogfight. My dream as a 10-year-old boy came true in an actual Spitfire. What about flying as a career? In commercial aviation, all pilots are required to hold a Class 1 medical certificate. For a commercial pilot license, a student must have first completed the PPL course, be not less than 18 years old, and must have logged at least 200 hours at the end of the training. Commercial pilots are required to demonstrate a higher level of standards and professionalism, and training usually involves higher costs and a longer time frame. Flight instructors charter pilots, safety pilots, or any other pilot that gets paid for the work they render, flying passengers and cargo for hire, will require a commercial pilot's license. Commercial flying can be a rewarding career. It can offer beautiful sights, unique missions, and sometimes decent wages. And even if you don't fall in love with it and embrace a career in general aviation, it can give you invaluable experience and refine your skills further which will make you all the more appealing to employers in other sectors like the airlines. If you intend to fly in adverse weather conditions where there is very bad visibility outside, you will need an instrument rating. Instrument rating training involves being familiar with how to interpret what the aircraft is doing and how to maneuver the aircraft with sole reference to the inside instruments, dials, gauges, and displays. Having the instrument rating allows the pilot the privilege to fly as PIC in adverse weather conditions. Now let's say you want to take things one step further. From flying single engine airplanes, you want to go faster, farther, and fly something bigger. For this, you will need a multi-engine rating to fly multi-engine aircraft. Now don't worry if all you have is a private pilot's license because that's the minimum you need to get that rating. You do not need a commercial license. Having the multi-engine rating gives the pilot the privilege to fly multi-engine airplanes as pilot in command. Being multi-engine rated is a grand step towards becoming a more professional pilot that requires demonstration of a higher level of mastery and a thorough understanding of aircraft performance and airmanship. Multi-engine aerodynamics are very interesting and even with uh, glass uh, fly-by-wire systems in aircraft right now, it still does not eliminate the critical skills needed to control the aircraft in the event of an emergency. Or if you're in a situation that you have to pull all those skills in, let's say you're having a, a very strong crosswind landing at night, uh, those things would actually come very useful in a way that you understand how the aircraft behaves. I would always tell the guys to fly with, uh, even if it's a, if it's a fly by wire aircraft, uh, at the end of the day, it's just another airplane. For pilots who wish to become airline captains, they must have an airline transport pilot license. They must have no less than 1,500 hours, and 250 of which has to be as pilot in command. Apart from acting as captain in the airlines, 
ATPL holders have the privilege of teaching other pilots in their company on an aircraft that they are rated in. But what about an MPL license or multi-crew pilot license? How does it differ from a commercial pilot license or airline transport pilot license? An MPL is a competency-based training conducted in multi-crew operational environment. The program makes heavy use of simulator technology and aims to bring a student from a trainer aircraft direct to an airliner. MPL applicants must be at least 18 years of age and must have the same theoretical knowledge as that of an airline transport pilot license holder. Uh, flight training is basically not cheap. It is expensive. Is it worth it? Yes. Uh, but you have to get into it for the right reasons. I had several instructors or mentors who inspired me. Uh, one guy that stands out was always, would always be Maynard Halili. Uh, the reason being, uh, Maynard went through a very unique training program, a little bit later in his life. But he came back here and he paid it forward and shared it to a lot of pilots in the Philippines. And the message was that it's really the person that you can really level the, the playing field. Thank you.